In the previous videos, we have discussed about the steps of designing pre-stressed concrete members. The design process normally starts with the service deeply limit state, where we need to determine the stress in the pre-stressed member and check against its limits in compressions and tension. So far, we have discussed about the initial sizing, steps to determine the geometrical properties of the section, the process to derive equations to determine the stresses in pre-stressed member, and also their respective limits in compressions and tension. There is one more important part in the design step here, which is the Magnal Diagram. The Magnal Diagram is a method of optimization for us to quickly determine an appropriate P and E, as well as its tandem profile in the pre-stressed member to increase the chances of having the stress within the allowable limits. What you see here, there is at least two running parameters here which can be designed. And based on the equations that you have derived, adjusting the P will affect the stresses developed in the member same goes to adjustment of E. The compound effect of both the P and E will lead to the variations of the stress in the member. And we know that the ultimate goals of the checking here is so that the stress developed within the members are always in the allowable limits. Without the Magnal diagram, you will need to try an error for various P and E until you obtain a situation that all the four equations fulfill the stress limits. This process of try and error can be quite tedious. With the aid of the Magnal diagram, the try and error process can be minimized. As the Magnal Diagram gives a graphical presentation in terms of the feasible areas for the PME in combination. In these videos, we are going to discuss about the Magnal Diagram and its application. First, this is a typical Magnal Diagram. It is made of two axes. In the y-axis, it is a function of 1 per p, which is an inverted of the pre-stressing force. And in the s-axis, it will be the eccentricity, E. The Magnal diagram is made of several straight lines, which defines the boundaries based on the stress limits of different conditions. Exceeding the boundaries will result in failure of the respective conditions. The feasible area will be the regions that fulfills all the boundary conditions. Therefore, from the Magnal diagram, you can pick any point within the feasible area which is later converted into 1 per p and eccentricity e and from the 1 per p you are able to define the pre-stressing force with that you can determine a suitable pre-stressing force and eccentricity in the member so that all the stresses developed in the members are within the allowable limits. We shall discuss in detail on this later. First, we need to discuss how the Magnal Diagram is produced. Remember, in our previous slides, we have discussed about the derivations of the equations to determine stress in pre-stressed concrete beam. 
these equations are with the limits based on their critical conditions as defined in the table here. A typical pre-stressing beam will end up like these four equations with the defined stress limit in accordance to their critical conditions. At the transfer, the top beam is limited by the tension limit. The bottom beam is controlled by its compression limit. As for the service, the top fiber of the beam is controlled by its compression limit and the bottom beam is controlled by its tension limits as listed here. Previously, we did mention about the tension limits. There are two ways. Under some circumstances, no tension is allowed. Under the other circumstances, the FCTM is allowed. This was mainly due to the concept of full pre-stressing and partial pre-stressing. Next, based on their four equations and their respective stress limit, all the equations are to be rewrite in the form of 1 per P greater or smaller than AE plus B. This is a typical format of the straight line in Y and X axis. The Y axis will be 1 per P, while the X axis it will be E. The constant A here will be the gradient of the straight line, and the constant B will be the intersect in the Y axis. After rewriting the equations in this format, you will obtain these four equations. These four equations is derived on the basis of the partial pre-stressing. Should the full pre-stressing is being used, the FCTM in the equations will be considered as zero. What you see the equation here is actually in the format of 1 per P greater or smaller than AE plus B. This part will be the AE and this part will be the constant B. In each of the equation here, the unknown will be the P and E. You know the alpha and beta, which is for the losses. You know the gamma superior and gamma inferior, which is the load factor. You know the A and Z top and Z bottom. These are the geometrical properties of the section. And you know the moment minimum and moment maximum. These are the loading acting on the member. Substitute all the relevant value into the equations. You will be able to obtain constant A and constant B. The constant A will represent the gradient of the line. And the constant B will be the Y intersect with the line. Now, start to draw the line on the X and Y axis. Let us look into the first equation. Draw a straight line for the first equation. There is a symbol here indicating greater and equal. It means that the y per p is greater and equals to the straight line. Therefore, the visible regions for the first line here will be in this direction. Next, you construct the second line, which is this. 
the symbol is greater and equal therefore we are looking at the upper regions of the second line next draw the third line which is this it is again greater and equal which is above the line here lastly is the fourth line the symbol is smaller and equal for the fourth line here we are looking at the regions below the line there is a fifth line here it is normally used to represent the possible physical limitations such as the maximum eccentricity for the overall depth of section which can be governed by the minimum cover for the prefacing tendon or due to the provisions of the shear link taking these sections as an example with the neutral axis of the section determined which is 912 from the bottom of the section here it is not possible for the prefacing tendon to fall beyond 912 mm as this will result the tendons being outside of the section you might need to consider the cage for the shelling or even the minimum cover from the surface of the beam section with that the maximum eccentricity is determined and a vertical straight line is drawn you know that it is not possible for the tendons to fall beyond that region then the feasible area will be the area covered by all the lines it is basically the area where it fulfills the requirements of all these fine lines then you can choose any point within the feasible area as your pre-stressing load and eccentricity